But if you guys really think about it, in the, in the book of Jeremiah, this is no joke, in the book of Jeremiah, make no mistake about this and hear and understand. Jeremiah 1 says, God said, I knew you before I put you in the stomach of your mother. He did not say, now that's in each and every one of us sitting here. Each and every one of us sitting here, he said, I knew you. He did not say, I knew of you. Now, uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of women who've had abortions. Let me tell you something. God doesn't lose no babies. Whether you were thinking right at the time, or whether it was a challenge in your life, or whether, whatever the circumstance was, a baby got lost. It didn't get lost. It goes directly back to the heavens of heavens. God doesn't lose no babies. Number one. Number two, when God said, I knew you, before, before, and before He sent you here, He gave you all your gifts, your talents, your vision, your calling, and your purpose in life. He gave it to you. He gave it to you. What did He give it to? Your spirit man. Your inner person. Remember, you are three pieces. You are three parts to complete this. Your brain has nothing to do with anything spiritual. It does everything to confuse the real you. Your brain does. Your brain is a physical organ. But you're made up of three things. You're made up of your what? Your spirit. That's the real you. The spirit. You are a spirit. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. You have a soul. That's your mind, your will, and your emotions. And you live in a vehicle called a what? A body. This body does not have its own nature. You teach it what to do. You teach it to train. I taught my body to build race cars. I taught my body to jump the cars and crash the cars and wreck them and skate them. That's my makeup. God gave me my gifts and talents. He gave each and every one of you gifts, talents, vision, calling, and a purpose in life. You have a purpose. It's up to you to discover that purpose. You could never discover your purpose in life without Jesus Christ living in your heart. You can work. You can go to this job. You can go to that job. You can jump around from job to job. You can make some money. You can say you're happy. You can say, well, that's what people do. They get up and they go to work and they come home. You know, it's the same routine. Yeah, you can do all that, but you have not discovered your purpose. When you discover your gifts, your talents, your vision, your calling, and your purpose, life is supernatural. It's not going to work. When they go, do you go to work? I love what I do. As a stuntman, I love doing vehicular stunts and jumps and falls and fight, whatever it is. I love being a stuntman because that's what I do. That's my, that's my gift. I love building race cars. I love racing and I love mentoring. I discovered what I'm supposed to do. There's only two tragedies in this life. Only two that you will ever have to face. Ever have to face. One of them is leave the earth without knowing where you're going. How many of you left your house today without knowing where you were going? Nobody. Everybody knew where they were going to go today. You get up, go to work. You get up and go to school. You get up and go to your job. Whatever it is. You get up, you know where you're going. You don't just leave like a goose in the fog and drive around. You don't do that. You get up with a purpose where you're going. That's a tragedy to not know where you're going. As a Christian, let me tell you something. As a Christian, you don't die. There is no death. When you leave here, in one, one, let me say it again, one, one hundred of a second, that's faster than a blink of an eye. You go from here to there, and you're in a brand new body at 33 and a half years old. 33 years old. Do you know why you're 33? Number one, you're created in the image of God. Genesis 127. Number two, God walked the earth for 33 years. So when you leave here and you get to there, you're a 33-year-old body. Heaven is identical to earth. How many grew up in a Catholic home? If you understand the, the old, the old, the Old Testament prayer... 
That prayer was never for today, never for, never for people on earth. That prayer was for the people who were on earth with Christ. This is before Jesus left the earth. When his disciples says, how should we pray? He said, you pray in this manner. Our Father, who art in heaven. That's not his name, Art. Howard is his name, remember? Hallowed be, oh, Howard is his name. No, Howard's not. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven is identical to earth, but without sickness, diseases, lack, poverty, division. None of those demons up there are in the heavens. Do you understand? God said this. It's identical. You guys, all this creation here, everything in the natural was never started in the natural. It was always started in the spiritual. That's how come you can't get in a fight with anybody unless it starts spiritual with a thought. You and me can never have a good relationship if we have a bad thought. You could never have a victorious life if you have a defeated thought. Every person is defeated from the inside out. So you are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. Make no mistake about when God said, I knew you before I put you. Before I put you. And then he said this. When I send you to the womb of your mother... I am going to give you your gifts, your talents, your vision, your calling, and your purpose. However, without me sending the Holy Spirit to this earth, you're going to have a challenge trying to figure it out. Because the school teacher is going to tell you this, and your mommy is going to tell you that, and your daddy's going to tell you something else, and the college professor is going to tell you another thing, and the politician is going to tell you somebody, something else, and your best friend is going to tell you something else. So you have all this stuff called information. Do you know what concentrated information is? It's confusion. It's confusion. Well, I'm going to go ahead and try this. I'm going to try that. Can you imagine now? I've got the Jarvis family here from Missouri. They came out here for me to build them a 1967 Camaro. That white one that you've seen over here. Ishmael and you, you and your, my brother over here. The white convertible. Can you imagine if they came over here and they left me all this money for me to try to build that car? Let me go ahead and practice on his car. See, you got to understand, there's different degrees. There's an engine builder, then there's somebody who just built an engine. There's a race car driver, then there's somebody who just drove a race car. There's a stunt man, then there's somebody who just did a stunt. There's a truck driver, then there's somebody who drives trucks. There's different degrees, different degrees, different levels of expertise. Just because you stand in the garage, it doesn't make you a car. So you got to understand who you really are. And the reason why people start failing at the or, or losing at the race of life is because they do not know their true identity. So you are a spirit. That's a come cloning can never take place. You can make a robot, but you can't clone somebody. Ignorant people are ignorant. They'll always stay ignorant because they factor out the spiritual end of it. You are a spirit. You have a soul. Your mind, your will, and your emotion. Nothing to do with your brain. And you live in a body. Your body does not have its own nature. If it did, it would get up and leave. You teach it. You train it. You excel in the game. How many, seriously, can look at me and say they love to get up and go to their job? Okay. They're called to do that. That's your walking in your calling. You're walking in something you can get up and enjoy. It took one one hundred of a second for Lisa, for all the people that raised their hands. If nothing changed in your life, can you get up and do that for the rest of your life? Yes. See? Now, the ones who cannot get up and do that, it's not a big deal. 
you have to make a minor mid-course correction in your life. Minor. It's not a big change. Everybody thinks, I got. oh my God, i got to make a big change. That's a lie from the pit. Look at big doors, big doors. Swing on a little hinge. Little keys open up big vaults. A small spark makes a huge explosion. Little rudders turn big boats. Little bits turns the carriage of horses. It's the little things you do on a daily basis that produces the change in your future. Because the secret to the future is hidden in the daily routine. We can't complain about what we permit. Your biggest enemy is not you. How many people, who's your biggest enemy? Me, I'm my own enemy. No, you're not. You're not an enemy to you. That's as dumb as a day is long. Your biggest enemy in your life is the individual who keeps bringing up your past, bringing up your mistakes, bringing up anything of yesterday that doesn't edify, exhortate, or exalt you or your future. Remember, the past doesn't destroy the future. The thoughts of your past do. You're going this way. You're feeding your future. All of a sudden you start feeding your past. Your future dies. Why, why would you feed something of yesterday? Yesterday. 